Alright guys, Hatch Comic again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Dashi and Preds back in tech as it seems going into the upcoming season and straight away smashed with a load of content pieces they've got to get on with from the Optic Boys. But of course they've got the Legacy game coming up in a couple of days time and Dashi had lots of thoughts as well on exactly what it takes to be a pro player at the very top level, especially if you want to win a world championship. Very much interested to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Plenty to get into. Firstly though, we've got to talk about the majors. As of recording, we do not know where the majors are going to be. I don't know if this is a hint from the COD League that maybe the announcement is coming soon. Usually, it's October sometime where they tell us what the format is going to be. The game comes out in a couple of weeks tomorrow, right, on the 25th. So it's actually not that far away in the grand scheme of things. And we will have some sort of CDL structure next year. At least that's what the COD League are confirming, that the league still exists because we, they haven't said much in some time. But no, they say hashtag CDL 2025 and there will be at least one major next season so look next year there will be a world championship there will be the ewc event in Riyadh, saudi arabia they well we don't exactly know when they will be this year it was july and august respectively and there will be other majors in between now and then last year unfortunately we only had four majors and this year i would love to say we're gonna go we're gonna go up to five we're gonna get to six maybe i mean in my ideal canada we have like seven majors plus champs plus EWC but let's say six to be very optimistic and I think that's happening right if we get back to five we've done very well I think I don't really see many signs of the CDL taking huge strides right now in the correct direction as far as I'm concerned so let's say we just get four again as disappointing as that may be with a load of online qualifiers similar to last year where are they actually going to be because the problem is right these organizations are cutting paychecks they're cutting salaries and um you know lots of the players they kind of afford what they used to pay for them and that makes sense and we talk about that in the scene as like look that might be a necessary thing going into the future fair enough and it may in some sense be good for the league because it's going to mean it's more competitive the players aren't just here at least from the fan point of view it's never good for the players to make less money right and you know I'm all for players getting the bag but um if the bag isn't there to be got then they've got to win more events rather than just you know sliding by on a paycheck getting top eight every event which is the argument but equally if the teams can't afford to pay the players as much they equally can't afford to throw a massive event because it ain't cheap to run an event especially when you don't own your own stadium to hire out a venue for four days pay all the staffing costs and everything involved it's not easy to get that job done and this year I'm not sure which organizations are going to be looking to go and do so for example Boston for the last couple of years have run good events over there in Massachusetts but um will you know now they're becoming basically a poverty org or not far off are they going to run it back again like with another event there it seems kind of doubtful to me. You'd expect that Optic would probably look to run one after running and winning last year's World Championship, so I guess that's a possibility. Toronto, I think, are making it quite clear that they do want to run another event over there in, you know, Canada, so I think they probably will look to do that. Obviously, we've talked about FaZe, right? Are they going to run one finally again? Like, what's going to be happening there? Raven said they would last year and never did, so that seems unlikely that things are going to change this season. I know there also was, of course, a Miami events last year and heretics run this situation over there and even toronto i think adam adamu said because toronto also have as part of their whole entity mad lions koi and those are spanish teams so i know they did kind of contemplate the possibility of running an event in spain but um whether that happens like i'm not getting my hopes up let's say for another european event but it would be it's going to happen eventually whether it happens this year i don't know but i'm just kind of running out of teams that are going to host an event because even you look at the other top teams let's say in los angeles thieves nature basically said well we spent all our money on scrap and hydra and envoy and running an event isn't cheap certainly out in la if they were going to do it there so yeah i'm not sure where the majors are going to be basically next season as it stands and um i guess the other one just to mention is the falcons right because they are coming in they have money to spend they could run an event i'm hoping that they will run an event but um jake hell says it's probably more likely if they are going to run one they'll just do it in vegas where they're kind of technically based as the Vegas Falcons rather than doing another one in Saudi but you know who knows maybe we go to Saudi twice a year. Another update on yesterday. Yesterday morning we talked about Dashi's thoughts on sound equalization and the problem that it is in the league and of course there are certain players that over the few years have been kind of like accused of using sound EQ. Of course we mentioned Awakening. We mentioned obviously that Boston team featuring Awakening was kind of chiefly responsible. I mean that's really no like there's no two ways about that as far as we're concerned but it's been a debate with 
Kismet as well, right? Because Kismet, of course, had a great year in Modern Warfare 2, not so much this year. And also on his Search and Destroy this season, his online Search and Destroy was incredibly good. He had a 1.3. On LAN, that dropped off drastically. And the argument was, well, is that because Sound EQ is disabled on LAN? They lock it, I'm pretty sure, in the CDL PCs, and they can't do that remotely because, you know, no one wants to send the PCs back to the headquarters for the CDL guys to look at, whatever. But, um, you know, it's been a talking point. Why is Kiz's search and destroy not so good on LAN? And Kiz actually just responds to this yesterday and says, you know, this narrative that's running that I would use or ever use EQ in a competitive match, I have the utmost integrity, utmost, whatever, when it comes to that type of stuff. People don't understand that I had a poor search and destroy on LAN where my whole objective is to be enabling strats. LAN changes with wall bangs and nades and the game plan shifted at times when it wasn't going well for us. In my nature, I'll always give up my life for the team and play for the win, not putting the blame on anyone else. I'd always take accountability where it's needed for when I didn't adjust well enough in the game. So interesting response though, I thought from Kiz and absolutely fair enough from his side to give a bit more context to that situation. But I still know there was loads of people in the replies to this tweet saying, oh, we don't believe you, buddy. Like you're an EQ abuser and all this. And it's just, you know, it's difficult, isn't it? Because obviously Dashy's out there saying, well, EQ's basically hacks. It's basically cheats, but it's legal hacks and all this. And then nobody knows who's actually using it or not. Like no one's been fully exposed or otherwise. And Kiz says he doesn't and he has the integrity and I, I back his word on that. And then last season, you get the similar GA discussion with the likes of a boozer over there on Surge and Scrappy saying that this guy's using auto tactical sprint or at least single tap sprint. A boozer then says nothing and then eventually he does come out a couple of months later and saying, no, I wasn't using it. And it's like, who's right, who's wrong? Nobody knows. It's like almost impossible to actually know these things for sure unless you can actually go into the settings of these players. So, you know, it's just one of those narratives that has run, but Kismet's shutting it down. But let's talk about the Optic Boys back in Texas, right? Two days from today is the Optic Legacy match, of course, on the Saturday. And I was thinking, well, it's about time these boys get back in Texas, right? So Dashi says, back in Texas, time to get active. Of course, Kenny's here in the replies as well. And, uh, you know, Ken and Dashi ready to run it back for a new season. This is pretty funny though, right? So Dashi lads straight back in Texas and, um, you know, he's back there ready to go for the new season. And straight away, Paige, of course, who kind of manages the players and stuff over there at Optic, is straight in with the latest message. There's no like, oh, welcome back, Brad, and welcome back. Like, you know, I hope you settled in well again, back for the long haul of the new season or whatever. It's like, yep, content tomorrow, reminder content tomorrow. And uh, Dash is like, yeah, Paige's already spawn trapped me. I can't quite tell on here, because obviously it says Wednesday, October the 9th, Thursday, which of course is today. And I can't exactly tell what it says. It says like lobby here, which I guess is like where to meet or something. And then it has the times on the left-hand side. And I can't quite tell what those times are. This is PM, I guess, actually. And um, this is AM. So it looks like Dashi's not going to have to get up so early today. So I think he's going to be okay. But um, you guys can see that on the left-hand side, can't just about. I thought it was kind of interesting just to see how they manage things over there. But people were also saying, and understandably, like, okay, did this happen to Kenny as well when Kenny got back the other day? It's like from Japan, did he get hit straight with, yep, content tomorrow, get ready to go. And then people were like, well, if this is happening to Dashi, if this is happening to Kenny, right? And look, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing for the scene that content happens from these teams. And I think we're going to see it for more teams this season as well. Thieves, I'm sure, are going to have some phenomenal content with those boys coming out this year. And I think we're going to see more players streaming as well and doing a good job on that side, you know, because topping up the bank accounts makes a fair bit of sense right now. And obviously Optic, the content org, they won the world championship this year. Thieves, the hoodie org, they won the world championship a couple of years ago, right? So, you know, I don't think it necessarily needs to take anything away from a team's competitiveness, but other people were saying, well, if Dashi and Kenny are back and they're getting hit with the content requests, what about Pred? Because Pred has been kind of AFK for some time, really. He did his European World Tour, then he went back to, of course, Australia, where he's originally from, and he stayed some time there. And I thought, okay, hang on a second. He's got to get back out here basically now, as not he, getting ready to go for the new event. And actually, just as I was about to record this video, I just refreshed the timeline and saw this in the Optic Gaming community with Harmeen heading to the airport to pick up his girlfriend and guess who he runs into but none other than an AG getting back presumably here to Dallas ready to go for the new season. So yeah Pred back it seems just in time for the new year and to get hit by the message from Paige to like hey content is due tomorrow. Wanted to share a couple of interesting clips here from Dashi as well just to close out the video really talking about flow state and talking about what it takes to be a player at the absolute highest level and also really discussing what it took for him to be considered one of the best aimers in COD. Of course, you've got to have natural talent, right? There's no doubt about it, but there was that kind of famous clip that I think even Hex Street has had a few years ago. It was actually 
on Black Ops 3 when um, Dashi was sniping and just kind of like absolutely frying with the Locust, which this is as well, of course. And look, back in the day, Dashi, when he was first competing, was competing in competitive sniping back in like Modern Warfare 2, like the original Modern Warfare 2. That's what Dashi was doing. It was all work on centering. It was all like that was all what was important. And of course, even when you take the sniper out of his hands, that is still a critical component to being good at Call of Duty, right? So Dashi gives that and his time playing that a lot of credit for his shot in the present day. But very much on Twitter, your thoughts as ever in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time. What's the biggest example of someone being in flow state in your career? Biggest example? Bro, flow state is very, very, like, rare, like, to witness. Like, I think the, off the top of my head, the lack of witness, but, like, somebody else being in flow state, it was, like, you guys remember Ant's fucking uh, spree against, I think it was Thieves online in Berlin? It's like, in seven, I don't know, they looked literally insane. But that spree was actual flow state, that's what it looks like. But, like, even that, like, bro, he probably didn't even have that the entire map. Like, that shit's, like, like, to keep that level of, like, perfect concentration with literally no other thought other than the game for that long is fucking absurd. Like, well, do you guys ever have, like, moments where, like, you're aimbotting or you're frying in a spree and then, like, the second you start thinking about what you're doing, it pretty much ends? That's pretty much what it is. Like, once you, like, start thinking about, holy shit, I'm low-key fucking ripping or I'm low-key fucking not missing, you know, you guys get it, but... It's impossible to like maintain, bro. Like, everyone's human, you know what I mean? Everyone just has thoughts. Like your brain is like its own thing almost. I feel like to be in, you guys look at flow, like just locked in. I feel like it's, it's literally like everybody has the, everybody can do it. It's just like, it's, all it is is just staying in the moment. Like it's just literally no other thought. It's just to always be thinking about or not thinking about anything else other than the present. It might sound fucking simple, and it actually is simple, but it's just genuinely hard, because as soon as one minute thought, like, occurs, like, you already fucked it up. Like, example, like, the fucking thought of, like, say if you're fucking, you're playing really good, right? Then, as soon as you're conscious of how good you're playing, you're ready, you just did it right there, you know what I mean? It's that fragile. It's like, I can practice shooting straight and get better, but I'll never shoot a straight as you. I mean, like, I'm, <laughs> I don't want to be like, facts! <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying to say that about myself, but... Yeah, I don't know, maybe I am born with something that is, like, better at shooting, but I did also put in a lot of, I don't know, I guess it goes both ways, but they put in an absurd amount of time into video games now. Comp snipe back in the day, people centering on lock? Yeah, because, like, back in the day, like, yeah, I'll actually put on the sniper, I'll show you guys, like, what basically comp sniping was back then. I guess this actually did help with my centering without even noticing, but, because in comp sniping, like, there was no hard scoping, so you couldn't just, like, track people, like, you had to actually just, like, quick scope everything, so at most you could do was, like, something like this. Like drag scope, that's called a drag scope. Even though, like technically, like like if you like like to us, that was a quick scope, but or like I guess nowadays. But if you wanted your shot to look like super clean when somebody's specking you, you try to like pop shot or black scope, so you would like barely aim in. Which is why, like back in the day, like everybody like just wanted to have like a shot like that because like when it, in the kill cam, if you guys did play the games, like it was just like your scope didn't even actually fully scope in and it looked clean as fuck. So if you had to like to aim in, but the only way to actually hit those consistently was to have good centering. Cause like any micro adjustment, like it would pop up in the kill cam. So I guess without even realizing, like it did help like with centering. But back then I didn't even look at it like centering, I was just looking at it like just sniping, you know what I mean?